Cool. Um, yeah, so this, this was originally planned to be a blog post. Um, so I kind of like sat down and I wrote down a couple of things about, um, I've learned about how I work and, uh, and productivity and uh, kind of like also adding like an element of mindfulness to that. And it kind of got longer and longer and longer. And I was like, oh, maybe like that could be a session at the retreat that people would be interested in. And I was super excited that so many of you were interested um, sort of in that. I, I want to start with a story about um, heroin addicts in, uh, in Vietnam. Uh, some of you might have heard that story before, and uh, it's really, really fascinating. And uh, so during the, the Vietnam War, uh, in the, um, the, the troops of the US that were, were fighting in Vietnam, 20% of those people were heroin addicts. And uh, that was actually really fascinating for me to know. I've never actually heard that before. And um, there, there was a researcher, um, I forgot the woman's name, I'll, I'll send you guys a link to the story afterwards. There was a researcher who um, uh, kind of like was tasked with finding out how these people had developed those, those habits and you know, heroin being the probably worst habit that you know, people can imagine and, and that someone might adopt. And, uh, and so this woman was trying to help those people and what happened is that when the, the war ended, all those uh, U.S. troops came back to, uh, to the U.S. and 95% uh, of them stopped taking any heroin and haven't ever taken any heroin after, afterwards. And uh, at the time that like baffled all the researchers and completely blew their minds of like how one of the most addictive things in the world can just no longer, when all this like, you know, some, like we hear all these relapse stories of people that, you know, been drug addicts and then still fall back over and over. And how like just 95% of them just were cured literally by flying like from one place to the other. And uh, what she found is that um, everything that's really important for building habits and for changing our behavior um, is much, much more related to the way our environment is set up and not that much related to any of the other things. So she kind of like um, completely changed the behavioral um, sciences studies around building habits at the time and, uh, and kind of concluded that if you can control your environment, then you can control uh, your life and, and your mind. And um, I found this really, really fascinating to say like, you know, put someone into a different environment, put them from the atrocities of the Vietnam War back to their families at home in the US and all of a sudden, there's absolutely no problem at all that these guys will ever um, be heroin addicts again. And uh, so we kind of did a lot of more studies and kind of like shaped the idea of how habits are formed. And I think especially today in this like digital age where it's very easy to like look at our phones or like, you know, kind of like, especially as a distributed team, um, when people first join, they like I often tell people the problem is not that these the people that first join us that they work too little, oftentimes the problem is they work too much, right? There's like 24-7, there's something going on on, on HipChat. And, and so like, how can, uh, how can we help and, and, and kind of like people to, to establish an environment where they are much more in control and less kind of like just being influenced by things that happen around them. Um, so I just wanted to share some of those ideas based on that story, how kind of like um, we often think that um, so our ability to predict what we can do in the future um, is actually, we're very, very poor at that. Like we're very poor at predicting what we can possibly, how productive we can be tomorrow. Or how um, and, uh, and what we are much better at is by working with the constraints of a certain environment that's given to us. And so like the idea is that instead of trying to change our habits or instead of trying to have a, um, maybe like with the new year, new year's resolution that's based around us trying to you know, force new habits. Um, I want to kind of like give a suggestion that instead of that, what we could do is simply think about the environment uh, that we live in and how we can make simple changes to that environment to actually help us change our habits without using our mind at all, just by simply um, kind of making, making small tweaks. And I want to give some examples just to, that I've kind of found uh, work re really, really well. So for a long time, uh, I felt that um, I didn't have great posture. And uh, so I felt that I was slouching and I, I wasn't like kind of doing very well. And uh, I read a lot of these articles and like, you need to sit like this and you need to do this to like get better posture. And, and I always caught myself and it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna improve my posture. I'm gonna sit better in my chair. And uh, 
every time I did that, after like just a few days or so, I'd be like, like oh, I'm like, oh, it's just like, why is that happening? Why can't I just control my mind better? And then I, I saw that, uh, I think uh, it's a video that Rodolphe shared, um, where he talked about actually that, you know, you need to sit in certain ways um, that kind of like improve your posture. And that's when I discovered that if I put just simply something higher, put my laptop higher, all of a sudden I don't worry about posture at all. I don't think about posture. It's just by the way I've affected my environment that all of a sudden my posture is improved and I feel much better the way I sit and uh, kind of like the way I, uh, I work. Um, so there was one example that really kind of like tipped me off in the last few months where I said like, wow, this is so powerful. I can just you know, do that um, and not use any of my willpower or any of my kind of my mind power to do that. And that was really, really awesome. Um, another thing I did is that in the mornings, um, I would often check my phone. I would feel like the first thing I do in the morning is check my phone and see Twitter and Facebook and email. And some of you might do that as well. And uh, for a long time, I tried to use like, I often think of myself like I have a strong will, like I'm not going to check it in the morning. And uh, I, I managed to do that for a few days, and then like the temptation is just too big, and I'll do it again. So what I experimented with, like again, based on the story of the um, heroin addicts in, in Vietnam, I thought like, why? Maybe there is a way I can act, change my environment. So what I started to do is to turn off my phone the night before, something I hadn't done in like maybe 10 years, where I think turning off phones was simply no no longer part of what you can do. And uh, and the the most interesting and actually embarrassing thing is that. I would wake up in the morning and press the home button on my iPhone still, and it would be off. And I would be like, oh, OK, it's not on. And uh, I knew that it wasn't on. And I would still have the habit. I would be amazed by my, by my like, habitual practice of just pressing that button. And uh, since then, I had a much, much better morning of like, instead of that, I would you know, kind of like be able to uh, you know, I do a short meditation session in the morning. And, and it kind of just helped me completely change uh, kind of like how I can experience mornings and feel much more in control of actually what I'm doing. Um, one, uh, another thing that I've, um, I've done before, and that, like, actually one of the things I've, I've, I've tried a long time ago when I was trying to build a gym habit, now it's super, super ingrained. I don't have to think about it too much. But um, when people often, I feel like um, I wasn't kind of going to the gym regularly enough. And so what I started to do is, in order to go to the gym in the morning, I would put my gym clothes on my, uh, um, on my desk. And simply by waking up and seeing that gym clothes there, there was like another simple kind of change of environment that helped me um, to kind of do that. Uh, another thing that's actually uh, one thing I've read about and I have, I've experimented with, it, with simply moving things out of sight. Like if you want to try not to eat certain things or like live healthier, um, simply moving things into a cupboard instead of outside um, can really help. And uh, another amazing thing I found is simply moving furniture in your house can have amazing impacts of if you feel like you want to make a change um, and uh, you want to kind of like procrastinate less or drew, simply moving a desk just almost just three feet to a different location can actually help you to then feel that, oh, this is different, this is different, my chair is in a different place. I don't feel this habitual kind of like, um, um, almost like a, like a magnet to try and do the same kind of like things that I would do every day. Um, so all these examples that I've given you are, are, are really not the most important thing here. Those are just some of the things that I found and they're very, very specific to my environment. You guys might all have a different environment. Uh, I could imagine Sunil not saying, well, I can't turn off my phone because if things go down, I have to know about that. <laughs> so you guys might need to actually like come up with different ideas, but I really want to just like keep you with like, I don't want to teach you what to do, just like maybe how, uh, how to think in, in, in the element of like how these, you know, uh, starting again from the study of the heroin addicts. Um, so, so this first part of what I wanted to share is this like control, control your environment and then you will control your life. Um, and the second part I want to talk about is um, about energy. Um, control, and, the, and similarly, I believe that if you control your energy, uh, you can also control your life. Um, and so the second part, I want to just briefly speak about that. And there's another story uh, that you may have heard of, which is that um, recently Mark uh, Zuckerberg was interviewed and they asked him, why is he wearing this, this same t-shirt and hoodie every day? And, um, and Mark Zuckerberg said that the reason, the simple reason he does that is he has so many important decisions to make every day 
um, he doesn't want to think about what he should be wearing. And, uh, and then I, I researched and I found that Steve Jobs, that was the main reason Steve Jobs was wearing the same thing every day as well. And uh, then I found an interview with Barack Obama and he said the same thing. And uh, he said, I don't want to make decisions about what I'm eating or wearing because I have too many other decisions to make. So actually very, very similar, like all these people, very, very similar in the way they, they kind of think about some of those things. And it all ties in with, the, to me, when I realized, okay, wh why, why do they think about it in that way? So I realized, let, let's take a step back. Like, what is a decision even? Like, what is a decision? Um, and the way, the best analogy I sort of came up with is that it's like a rep of your brain. It's like your brain doing a biceps curl, right? <laughs> that is what a decision is. And then if you look it up in the dictionary, it actually says it is decision equals uh, a strength of mind or will. Uh, so it's like, decision is like, you, you kind of use your, your attention span to kind of like focus in on something, you almost zoom in, and you, you contract like a muscle, you make that call, and then you zoom out again. So anyone who has ever, you know, done the, gone for a run, or been to the gym, or done any physical activity, they, you will all know you, there's only so many steps you can take in a run before you will be too tired. There's only so many reps you can do with a weight before you'll be too tired. And the same thing is true, I think, with there's also only so many brain reps, many bicep curls of your brain or the brain curls <laughs> that you can do, <laughs> that you can do any, every day before your brain will be too tired, right? And, uh, and, and to me, that's a very, very powerful idea because we know that we are very careful with, for example, running. We, not, we don't try and run for like seven hours at a time because we know it's eventually. But oftentimes with our mind, we, with our brain, we're going to be really, really tired. But we don't know that we're completely depleted and we start making like weird decisions about what we eat and especially late at night and things we like, um, kind of like things that, you know, activities that we do that, in a, in a, w when we had a fresh, kind of like uh, recovered uh, mind, brain, we wouldn't do that. Um, and so that general idea of like, okay, it's your energy and you have limited, ability, li limited availability of those you know, brain repetitions. So you want to be actually smart about how you use them and on, on what you use them. And um, what I found is that, that there is quite a f number of decisions that are possibly not um, that important to your success or to your sense of um, um, happiness if done repeatedly. And, and a number of things that, that I've discovered for myself over the last few years are what I'm, what I'm wearing. Like deciding repeatedly every day what I'm wearing is, has no contribution whatsoever to my sense of uh, fulfillment or happiness or success. Um, what I'm eating. Um, every, deciding every day and having to think through every day what I'm eating is actually not a very productive work, not a productive repetition for me to do. Um, the time I get up every day, having to decide that every day the night before, when I will get up the next day, it's not a very productive, uh, not, not, not a repetition that my brain should have to do um, because there's other things. Um, and so if you just think about the things we do every day, the way you decide them over and over again, you will find probably there's lots and lots of them. Um, that, that are not that, uh, that, that, are not that um, kind of helping you to actually achieve the things that you want to achieve. So, so what I, what I want to recommend though, and what I've done for myself is that these decisions, in fact, not only are we making poorer decisions, uh, not, only do we, not only are they not productive if we do them over and over again, in fact, we are making poorer decisions by doing them over and over again. So, so one of the things that I found is that um, with, with food, and I try to um, eat the same thing almost every day for, for almost with some variety um, for, for lunch meals, um, you can actually take a longer period of time. You can take a few hours to figure out what is a great dish for me or what is a great number of dishes if you don't want to exactly eat the same thing, but you want to feel like, okay, I can eat these three different dishes um, in rotation and I won't get bored of it. Um, so what are things, and you can sit down, okay, what do I need? Nutrition-wise, what, what are some of the ingredients? What are the things that I like? So you can spend a long time on that, on coming up with you know, great ingredients, and then saying, okay, those are now going to be my dishes that I'm going to be eating for like, 
the next few weeks where I'm going to not make that decision again every day what it is. And uh, the same thing with your outfit, right? The same thing with your bedtime, right? It's great to actually think hard about your bedtime, but not every day. Right? So you want to sit down and say, like, okay, what is a great bedtime? What is a great ritual? How much sleep do I want to get? Right? And then, okay, now I'm going to put this in place. I'm going to try this for a few weeks. And uh, same with my wake-up wake time, right? When do I want to wake up? Um, so kind of like using kind of the technique to say, what are decisions that um, are kind of like, you know, things that my brain doesn't need, shouldn't contract and zoom in every time to make that decision, but it's actually something that doesn't help me go any, go any closer to where I want to go. And anyone, every one of you kind of has their dreams and their vision and kind of like, actually, there's probably lo lots of room of things that you could cut out and, and kind of like move a lot faster and actually be a lot happier. Um, uh, that I found like kind of helped me, helped me a huge amount. Um, yeah, so, so those are the two ideas I just wanted to give uh, and, and, and share with you guys that if you can control the environment, you will have a better, better uh, shot at controlling your life. And if you actually control your, uh, um, your energy and if you control your, your, your brain curls that you're doing every day, um, then you will also have a better shot at, at controlling uh, um, your life. Um, those are just the two main ideas I want to give. And, uh, and I think that every one of you has a unique situation. So um, again, I want to, even with the examples I've given, they might not be uh, as relevant to you, but there might be others that you, know, you can take away and say, well, what are some that, that I could try that might be helpful? And uh, I just want to end that, um, that even those, like, those, those rules are, I sometimes get a little bit dogmatic or, or preachy and like even for myself, like oh, everyone, should, everyone should do this. And I just, so those are definitely no hard rules and you should break them and you should really do your routine and you should question them. And, uh, and, 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 and what I've also discovered for myself is that, you know, we, and especially we, with, uh, with us going teal, we are, we are no machines, right? So it's, it should be organic, it should be rhythmic and it should be, you should contract, you should have maybe an intense period of focus but then you can let go again and maybe you're like eating something different every day or like you, you're like wearing lots of different things every day. So it's like those like if, 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 if those are examples that you might pick up. Um, so, so no worries if you know that, that kind of like using that in an organic way and in a way that you know kind of like aligns with our rhythmic patterns that, that we have uh, I think is probably valuable. Thank you so much.